Hello dear Libra, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you for being here. I do apologize. Today is the uh, 3rd or 4th of November depending on where you are in the world. You are the last sign I'm doing. Hopefully you'll be able to receive a good reading from me. Um, unfortunately, yes, it is a bit late. Such is life. Let's see what's happening for you, dear Libra. You, you are hosting Venus. Venus is in your sign. And as I'm doing this reading, the moon has just moved into Libra as well. So, you know, the moon is our intuition. It's anything to do with mother. We may feel a little bit more intuitive at this time now because you are the sign of balance and relationships as well as other people uh, relationships may be going through an emotional time now there is conversations with Venus retrograde so around the 16th when uh, Venus will be turning direct that's going to be a very wonderful time for you know anything to do with love and money and our values projects everything will be full systems going forward but mercury will be starting to retrograde so just take care with communication go over things all right just in case there's miscommunication um i won't keep going let's see what your divine spread for the 1st to the 15th of November 2018 love and general spread divine spread let's see what's in store for you and I will be of course extending this reading on Vimeo as I've told a couple more signs um, I will be I will be doing um, the extended part on YouTube I'm not sure exactly when that will be. I might be trying that in the next month or so. And this will be because it's nearly Christmas and that will be my Christmas prezi for all of you, for your support for all the year. Okay, just to show my appreciation. Let's take your card. And we've got the Fool, which is beautiful. New beginnings. Let's take a Black Moon Astrology card and then I will take the Tarot cards, Spirit Guides and Angels for Libra. More information please. November 1st to the 15th, 2018. In this very important week that is ahead of us, Okay, this is your card and we've got the eighth house which is endings and beginnings so on point this is Scorpio energy incredible incredible the Sun is in Scorpio Jupiter is at 29 degrees and six minutes of Scorpio which says that it's at the 29th you could call it the 30th degree, which 30, there is no 30 because 30 equals two zero of the next sign. So you can say, because when the degrees has got, you know, it's progressed and it's 29 degrees plus six minutes, let's say it could be called the 30th degree or it's on the cusp of uh, Scorpio and Sag and it's at a very critical point just letting you know that now Jupiter is the planet of benevolence expansion and growth Jupiter is also the ruler of Sagittarius so anything to do with truth spirituality legal issues the law philosophy expansion on all those subjects all those matters that I just mentioned uh, foreign places and people, people at a distance, higher education. Okay, so the 29th degree is massive. Why? 
because Jupiter is ending a cycle of practically 13 years. There's your first two cards. And no, I will actually take them both for the root issue because, because they did fall here. One was on top of the other. Okay, and this position here is what you don't know. So I don't know, maybe, you know, I could have taken it like this and put the Ten of Cups there, but I will keep both cards as the root issue. Let me just show them to you. So we've got the Ten of Cups and the Five of Wands. So I will leave those there. I will still cut your cards. I'm still shuffling. So, yeah, almost a 13-year transit of Jupiter. It is returning home. So this is a major cycle. Okay, so ending. And obviously endings bring in new beginnings. And we've got the North Node ending up in Leo and the South Node ending in Aquarius. The nodes are changing. Um, Uranus is at zero degrees of Taurus. It's almost ready. Zero degrees, six minutes almost ready to dip back into Aries. It will be there for about four months, roughly. It is retrograding backwards. So we know that with retrogrades, we turn inwards, just like the planet seems to be turning backwards, we go inwards. So it's a time of doing things again, redoing things, going back to the past. It's a very, very karmic time right now. So Libra, let's take your cards. Let's take your spread. Okay. Now, what is hidden from you is the lovers. And this is Gemini. Here we've got Aries with the Fool. Let's look at the uh, recent past. We've got the Empress. And she is, she is Libra, Taurus. At the present position, death card. You have the death card twice. Incredible. Crowning your reading and your goal is the high priestess. So, so far, apart from this position, we've got all major arcanas. Let's look at what you, the advice and action to take is. And we've got the Nine of Pentacles. The outcome card, dear Libra, is the Five of Swords. Now the divine position here and what is going on planetarily is the Eight of Wands. So you do have two fives, the five of swords, five of wands. Now I'm going to take one more card on the five of swords because that is an energy that I need to, even though I'm taking more cards on Vimeo, um, I do sometimes take an extra card because I don't like to, to leave those of you that can't uh, and don't want to follow me on Vimeo and extend the reading, then you may have just a little bit more clarity. It is the outcome position, so it's important. Let's take a card on that Five of Swords. What's that all about? And we've got the Knight of Pentacles. Now we've got quite a few signs here. Quite a few different signs, dear Libra. Sorry about the pause. Okay. First of all, with Major Arcana here, with the Karma Dharma position, I should say, the Fool is, seems to be looking towards the past, obviously. He's looking back at the past. And as I was talking about retrogrades, I feel as though you're ready to take a leap 
leap of faith this is the pictorial key tarot let's say and this is the tarot 3d both are by David Corsair and the depictions are similar but this is just a 3d um, it's just the major arcana cards right so in the David Corsair pictorial key tarot we've got the fool looking above he's looking upwards now to me many times this does look as though you are waiting for some sort of a message some sort of an indication a sign before you take that leap of faith so it's as though you're at the edge standing on the edge of that cliff right and you're ready to move forward ready to risk something and you're waiting on that last bit of information now he's also looking straight up at the death card and the death card is Scorpio this is in the present position so whatever is going on in Scorpio is very important to you you're actually whilst the Sun now for each and every one of you of course this is going to be different but because we've got Jupiter the Sun in Scorpio plus Venus we will be moving back through Scorpio so as soon as she stops she will stop her retrograde once she gets to 25 degrees 25 and 15 minutes now she's at 28 10 minutes which says that she's going to go back another three degrees so on the 16th when she turns direct she will be moving through your sign as well as going through Scorpio she will finish up in Scorpio roughly around the 7th of January so I believe that because we've got the sign of Scorpio here the death card twice twice and I would say that the fact that it is twice here says that this is the inclination that I get that Venus was in Scorpio first time let's say and then she moved backwards and she will move back to the degree where she started her retrograde okay so let me um, let me just tell you when Venus turned retrograde in Scorpio she was um, okay so her retrograde started at on the 5th of the 10th so 5th of October let me go back to the 5th I'm just looking at the chart uh, and I will tell you okay so yeah uh, Venus was at 10 degrees 5th or 6th depending on where you are in the world Venus at 10 degrees roughly almost 11 degrees she turned retrograde so I believe that as soon as she hits the same position whilst moving direct and I will tell you exactly I pause the video so I can check that information so I don't waste your time uh, Venus will be at the same point roughly around the 16th of December 15th 16th of December so this could be a very very important time for you so write that date down put it in your calendar and think of where what was happening for you when Venus turned retrograde on the 5th of October 5th or 6th of October what was happening with you I believe that that situation is coming back again around the 15th of December so keep that date of course that will be an important time for you for everyone really but because you've got double Scorpio here okay double Scorpio so something may have ended for you around the 5th of October roughly around then okay let's continue at the base of your reading we have ten of cups so this is 
the distant past five of wands five of wands is a card of disagreements not being on the same page but it's petty disagreements ten of cups is a card of happiness it's past the wish fulfillment you're happy on all levels but it's funny that we've got two different energies here um, we've got a five and a ten now fives always speak of uh, difficult challenging situations but five also speaks of something coming in to bring in the change so the ten of cups always breaks down to the ace any tens become an ace so I would say that uh, and it could be even constructive criticism with the five of wands here because the ten of cups is usually a very good energy right even the ace of cups whatever you've it's like cycles just like the cycles of everything it has its own cycles you were happy at some point then came the disagreements um, not being on the same page and it can go either way it really can go either way because I don't know which card was first which one was second right they both fell out so I have to take both cards into account now if we look at both cards together they do add up to the devil 15 <clears throat> and the devil can be quite a nuisance So, this is quite a mysterious reading and I'll have to, I'll have to admit that. It is quite, quite mysterious. But, but I'm a Virgo and Virgos love mysteries. Virgos love to look at the details. So, I will get to the bottom of this, no doubt. Okay, so here in the hidden position and what you don't know is the card of the lovers and this is a karmic relationship. Why do I call it karmic? It's because it's a major arcana. It is fated, okay, it is a number six. Six speak of balance. Uh, six is the number of equilibrium as well. So there is some sort of a decision that you're needing to make now. It could be your partner. This is the card of Gemini. And Gemini is Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is very intellectual. Mercury is the left brain. It's all about logic. Um, so we it's logic over heart. Okay, so what are you or your partner going to do about this there is a decision that's necessary to be made now it could be that you're you are emotional you have got the open heart whereas your partner is using logic more than emotion they're not more heartfelt so you may be dealing with a gemini gemini aquarius libra just like you are um air signs tend to use the intellect more than what the heart they look at the facts so they do their math and they go for what the what adds up what does not add up is not what they're going to go for so dear Libra even though you're you're an air sign you're all about balance so you do you out of the three air signs I think that you're the one that likes to um, communicate and try and it's as though you're the in-between man you like to find that balance right you try and fit people in you try and fit the situation in to make everyone happy so it's not actually you're not actually going with what your heart says but you're looking at finding the peace, bringing in the peace, okay, because you are ruled by Venus and Venus is the uh, the goddess of love and beauty and anything that is beautiful, anything that is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anything Venusian 
is something that would be very special, very godly. And not only that, but in perfection, you are looking for the perfection because Venus is perfection, right? So sometimes, yeah, the world is not a perfect place, but everything is perfect as it is. Um, and that would be any differences would be beautiful as well. We're all original, okay? So in the recent past, you do have the Empress here, as I was saying. She's all about, you know, receiving and expanding your financial situation. Also, Venus is... Venus is all the good things, things that are of value, things that are have got a, an importance in our life. Now, Venus can be a mother as well. Venus is a pregnant woman. She is the mother of Earth and she provides. She provides, so this is an energy that you're dealing with because she's very creative as well. So through creativity, anything that you've actually given birth to, um, you may have started to receive, to receive the goods of what you, what seeds you have planted in the past. Now, the Empress needs to be patient as well because she may be giving birth in a matter of six months. Now, metaphorically, literally, does not matter. Everyone's different. As I said again, this could be a mother. This this could be you becoming pregnant and waiting to have a child, being patient before you can manifest, and that is even within business. Patience is necessary here with the Empress, but there is promise of receiving what you've already put in. So abundance is the word that I need to say right here. Abundance is yours through this new cycle that you are beginning. Now, because as I said before, the Fool is actually looking up at the death card. Okay. Now, this is Scorpio, obviously, and Scorpio is, it's the time of Scorpio right now. Death and transformation death of the old and rebirth of the new. Now this could be love, this could be business, this could be any situation, any partnerships or relationships, even within the family because we do have the Ten of Cups. Tens always usually depict a family, the family bliss. So for those of you that were in a disagreement, in disagreement with your partner, there is some sort of a decision that maybe your partner is making. Maybe you're making this decision because right across, diagonally from the decision is the card of Virgo. And I'm going to say the Nine of Pentacles is usually Virgo. Um, it could be any other Earth sign, Capricorn and Taurus as well. But this is the Virgo card for me. Now, this woman is um, abundant. She's got all the fruits of her labor around her. She's enjoying it. It's as though she's in the Garden of Eden, as you can see. There is plenty and more to go um, around, but she is alone. And um, Adam wasn't happy on his own, so that's why Eve was, um, was born. Okay, so... There's no measure of happiness unless there is a partnership. And Libra, you are all about partnership. Now, this is a time of working working on relationships, romantic business, partnerships. Okay, so this is the time to find the balance. So there is communication. There is, there is expansion. There is clarity, the sun being in Scorpio, anything that's been hidden is coming to the surface. 
And with Jupiter ending in Scorpio, there's a lot of good stuff coming in, a lot of benevolence and luck with a capital L. So know that whatever is dying in your life, whatever is ending, whether this is a business, because it could be business, that you are deciding to go it alone, look at the fool. He is beginning a new cycle. Now, it looks as though he's he's taking that risk on his own. He's on his own on that ledge. So you, this is a new cycle for you and this is your karma dharma position. So having the full and the new cycle, I would say more than likely, it's what was meant to happen. Okay, because this is, and when we've got so many major arcanas, it's totally out of your hands. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six major arcana cards here. Here we've got the high priestess. This is your goal. And the high priestess sits between two, two pillars. Now this could be being on the, um, on the edge or at the beginning of a new partnership, a partnership that you are not speaking about to the world. You are not letting people know. You're keeping that hidden. You are showing up in the world as single and standing alone emotionally. But there is a partnership here. There is a partnership. Why do I say that? Because we've got... Cupid's messages here. These are Cupid's love arrows in the position of the divine position, okay? Because even with the eighth house, endings and beginnings, and that's the house of Scorpio, that's also the house of intimacy. Shared resources, moving in together with someone and sharing everything. Okay, so with the high priestess here, and this is a very spiritual energy. This is a deep knowing. You have a knowing. If you are not certain or if this is not your situation and you're not onto some new relationship, then you need to trust your intuition that something is coming through for you. And this is obviously the singles that I'm talking to right now. Okay, now usually with a high priestess, I do see number 11. As you can see there, it looks like an 11. Even though it's Roman numerals, it's a number 2. Twos again speak of balance. So your goal is an action and advice position. Your goal is not to let the world know that you are in a good, very good financial situation. For some of you, you're keeping um, hidden. You're, you're holding back on telling people that you are at a point of wanting to share your life. You're at a point that you're wanting to share your, your personal life, your heart and everything that is Scorpio, and Scorpio is everything that is, um, Scorpio is where death and transformation takes place. So when we, when something has finished and it's, you know, it's used by date, has passed, it's got to go. And with, with that going, usually there is some sort of a pause in between and you could be at the point of, you know, just like the phases of the moon, would be just before, as the moon is now on zero degrees, it's the void, of course, which says that there is some sort of a pause where nothing is happening. It's as though time stands still. It's a void, just like up in space where there is no noise, there is no movement, it's black there is no movement it's all everything has stopped and it's as though your life has got some sort of a pause 
like that before the wheel starts to turn again and it's going to start turning right where the rebirth will be taking place now here with the death card and the the fool right across the, what does it say that whatever's died you need to move forward don't get stuck don't stop don't pause it's time to take action because taking that leap of faith will get you to a good place now this could speak of travel this could speak of just being very social sending out those messages don't hold back if you are communicating with another person through social media then they could be sending you messages of love now this could be something that has been happening from the past because with the five of wands here this shows disagreements now if we think of the other fives in the tarot the five of pentacles is two people that are alone they're going out alone right they both feel left out in the cold there's a feeling of lack if we look at the um, the five of cups it's got those two cups that are standing right so there's always an indication that there is a relationship in store some sort of a partnership and agreement let's say where there's two people involved now this is five people which says to me that in a family situation there was some sort of a disagreement not being on the same page but also with the five of wands that could mean family and other people getting involved within your life in your family life and that could have been the the beginning of the imbalance because five is an imbalance Venus is having my cat she's having a nice scratch and you can hear her little bell <laughs> ding -a -ling -a -ling. and that was like that bell that tingling of the bell that ringing of the bell does mean something yes my darling yes my sweetheart she's looking around to me okay so there was some sort of exterior external I should say influence here and I for some of you it could have been your mother now here we've got five of swords knight of pentacles now the knight of pentacles was for clarity the main card is the five of swords so this is competitive energy there's three people here which means that yes you could have been in a situation where a family situation has ended you know it's it's there's a change happening here a change from a family situation where there's a few people there's five could be there were disagreements there was a change that came in now the change may have started from before from the deep past because here it's the root of the issue so the root of the issue is disagreements in here there's competition so we do have external influences and that could be a love triangle yes if it's not a love situation romance then we're talking about an intellectual uh, imbalance here again it's a five but there's three people three is an imbalance as well but you've got the upper hand so you've got the sharper mind being an air sign you're very sharp sorry about that pause but my kitty wanted to get out so I had to open the door for her so the five of swords is a very very harsh energy as I said you may feel as though you're in a competition you feel for some of you I believe that you feel as though your partners checked out they're not with you they're not emotionally with you so slowly and steadily you may be moving towards the future 
right? Very slowly and steadily, you're looking at your finances, you're moving slowly. Now, this could be someone new that's coming into your life, or this could be someone that's already in the picture. So let's say that the third person, if this is a love triangle, they could be an earth sign, and it could be a Virgo. Now, whether this is someone that you've related related to recently, or in the distant past, I should say, or this is this is who your partner's been involved with, because the high priestess is the Axis Virgo Pisces. So we've got Virgo here already. Pisces is lack of clarity. Pisces is it's the 12th house and the 12th house in the zodiac speaks of completion. So you could be dealing either with Virgo, Pisces. I've also got Scorpio as I said, Taurus as well as Gemini. Now, I don't feel that we're talking about air, um, fire sign, even though we've got the five of wands here and the eight of wands. I feel that the eight of wands is more energy. It's very passionate, and that could be, passion could be coming from a Scorpio person as well. So if the knight of pentacles is just an energy of slow and steady movement forward, sometimes the knight of pentacles can be someone who's actually stopped. Just like I was saying, the pause, where the moon pauses, there is some sort of a pause and a stop because there is difficult energy here. You're in competition, as I said. But you can win this. You can win the competition. Now here we've got the intellect, and here we've got physical, physicality. Now, the argument could also be in relation to money. If this is not a love triangle, it could be in relation to anything to do with money and finances. Now, because we've got the Nine of Pentacles here, and we've got the Knight of Pentacles, which is coming in slowly, moving into the future slowly and steadily, Maybe if he's paused at the moment, he still will move forward, but very slowly. That will equal the Ten of Pentacles, and Ten of Pentacles is another completion. So completion with completions come beginnings, just like the Eighth House endings and beginnings speaks of. Now this is a number 32, which adds up to another 5. So we've got 5, 10, 15, again the number of the devil. If you've been dealing with a Capricornian person, then they could be the difficult energy within your life. Capricorn is all about career. It's all about becoming the authoritarian. Capricorn is also our status. So your status in your life may be changing from committed to single. But I feel as though you are you are seriously looking at something new coming through in your life. Now, others of you may be traveling and you may meet, be meeting someone um, through travel at a you know distant place because, as I said, Jupiter is moving into its home of Sagittarius, which is all about travel, foreign places and distant lands. I don't feel as though you're giving up you're strong enough to move through whatever this is. You've got the upper hand, as I said, with the Five of Swords. And I feel as though you're, you're ready to do whatever, whatever it is that you need to do to find the balance, to find your balance. Now, having the, having the six, the lovers across from the Nine of Pentacles again, as I said, the decision is to go for the money, go for the finances. For others of you, 
you're not looking at what you love to do, but you're looking at the finances. If this is in relation to career, you're looking at the money. You want the money to come in. Now, eighth house again is other people's money. Wheels, loans. For those of you that have needed to continue some sort of a business and there's been you've had sort of difficulty with and not being on the same page as well as the rest of the people in your group if you're dealing with another group then you've obviously you may have gone for a loan applied for a loan with Venus here it says that yes there's prospects here now this could be if she is like an energy that there is potential here but something here with a death card says that there has to be some sort of a change and this could be like you may be called back let's say back to the bank where you need to either change something because as I said uh, with Venus retrograde, Mercury's in shadow, you may need to go over details, um, add more details. They're asking for more information from you, okay, before you can get the okay. And it's, of course, time. You need a little bit of time. You've got to be patient on that. The news is going to be good. Don't fret about that with the Eight of Wands here. That's very good news and it's not going to take long because the Eight of Wands is quick energy. It says patience but maybe you're very impatient and as I said with retrogrades you have to turn inwards and you've got the chance to redo things, go over things again. I'm just looking if I have any more details. I'm going to take one more card here before I finish your reading. Now, as I said, you could be dealing with someone who is Scorpio and Taurus. Um, opposite Scorpio is Taurian energy. Wow. Seven of Swords. So again, secrecy. Secrecy as well as intelligence here. Um, seven is a number of the divine. Seven swords is, as you can see, he's holding. He's holding the four of swords. Now fours always speak of pause. And the three swords that are down the bottom, this is just more indication that there is a three people situation here. There is, someone has been hurt someone finds out about an intruder too many people involved here if this is not a love triangle then it's just people from your family um, not minding your own business and I think that you need to put an end to that dear Libra you need to call them out even though you are you know the sign of finding the balance and you're all about the other people I think that that's what's got going to change if you are going through death and transformation maybe it's the way you think maybe it's the the way you've been you may be changing you know changing overall your perception and the way that you need to take care of yourself let's not forget that the north node is finishing up in leo so leo is caring for ourselves it's our heart it's loving and nurturing ourselves before we can give that love to others so it's time for self-care dear Libra so as again we've got the pause here he's holding those four swords in his in his arms here there is a pause so it's as though you're back and forth you go from the five to the um uh, what am I saying? You go from the five to the seven, but because we've got the four of swords, which I did 
look at that. We've got four there and three there. So you're going two, one step forward, two steps back, and you're back and forth, I feel, here. But as I said, seven is the divine number. Know that whatever you are trying to accomplish here and you're not telling the world about it, in the end you'll be you will be the victor because in the divine position and I'm going to take one more card I know Libra that something wonderful is coming through for you and I'm going to extend this reading of course on Vimeo I take a lot more cards there let's take that one extra card for the divine position there we go we've got balance Again, we've got the Temperance card. This is Sagittarian energy. This is your spirit guides and your angels. They're working on your behalf. Do not worry about that. This is also an energy of healing. Let's not forget that. So whatever you've gone through, it's time to heal. Through messages, communication, flight, travel, it's time to heal those wounds. And again, it speaks of patience, being patient, tempering yourselves. Do not want to rush. You should not want to move forward too quickly because time is of essence. Time is very important and time is um, Saturn. Saturn holds on to time and he will bring things in. He will bring physical, tangible and important things stability into your life because Saturn is at home of in its home of Capricorn so he's very very strong know that what you're going through is you're putting in those building blocks you're building on your future you're building on your stability Saturn will give you back what you have invested longevity stability and new beginnings now, some of you may be coming into money, into money through some sort of a death. And this could be a will that is opening up. And we do have a mother here. So if if this is you, um, my condolences, I'm sorry. But as I said, with cycles, when it's time, there is, you know, it's not in our hands, whatever happens. Whatever happens in our life is orchestrated from above so we need to even though sometimes we may not understand the bigger picture everything is done for a reason there's a reason behind everything so for others of you as I said endings and new beginnings with Jupiter moving out of Scorpio this is what's going to bring in the money you're going to have to be intelligent Take your time, take it one step at a time. You can win. You're above everyone and everything. You've got the swords in your hand. You've got that, check it out. He's holding that ace of swords in the sky. This is clarity. This is also speaking your truth. Now we've got the five and the seven, which equal 12. 12 swords. And if we add the one and the two, there's that three of swords again. But 12 is also the hanged man, which he may be asking for you for some sacrifice. And again, there's that pause. So, okay, with the swords here, it's clarity. So I don't believe that you're at a point where you can't see your path clearly. I do believe that you can, you, f you can feel you can actually sense your path forward and again you're not telling the world so I think that I will leave it at that it will be interesting on Vimeo to see this was a very difficult reading for me to to do for you the um, it's as though you know the divine did not want me to get the messages out to you and I find that very strange some readings just flow and this one was like very, very mystical, very, very secretive, very hidden. Okay, dear Libra, 
All right, I will leave you with that. Thank you so much for being here, for liking, sharing and subscribing. You are so much appreciated. Thank you. I will see you soon. Stay well. All the best.